Hello, this is Dr. Anatol. I want to talk to you about something that I find fascinating about this culture. Uh, several people, aging people, asked me to help them to transition from this state to the next life. Um, they want me to transfer their consciousness into nirvana. Let's put aside whether I'm qualified for something like that or not. Um, I don't know, and if I knew one way or another, I would certainly not say something like that in a public forum. However, there are some things I do know, and that is that um, if you want to attain nirvana or the relief from the cycle of birth and death, um, which is uh, very likely a Hindu Buddhist dogma in the first place, which we will also not discuss that much. Then um, we have a question, how can it be done? Well, from everything I know, and this is where I'm pretty sure about, this is something I'm talking about from personal experience, rather than some theoretical bullshitting. The person who wants to enter into permanent non-dual state, which is what liberation would be, or salvation, or whatever you want the word to be, nirvana. Um, to enter the non-dual state permanently would imply that uh, during your lifetime you have evolved yourself enough that you actually are mostly living in uh, such non-dual state not bullshitting yourself about living in that kind of state, but actually living in that state. And uh, this goes back to something I've talked many, many times, and that is that uh, it's uh, nearly trivial to attain an experience of uh, non, uh, non-duality. Uh, you can do it through drugs, uh, you can do it through a retreat, you can do it through blah blah classes. I know lots of people who are right now doing blah blah classes to help people experience the state. There is a huge difference, however, between attaining an experience of um, a um, state and actually perfecting it and living in it. It's uh, akin to um, immigration versus tourism. And um, only a fairly ignorant person will, well, someone who is not an immigrant, uh, would think that by, say, going on a tourist trip to Italy, even for one year, uh, they would know the difference between actually living in Italy for the rest of your life. Very different problems, very different issues emerge when you need to perfect a state versus have an experience of a state. Uh, there is a big difference between living out of non-dual awareness and uh, having an occasional excursion into non-dual awareness. However, if you really truly want to play about with this nirvana thing, then this is the issue that will come up. How do you perfect this state? Well, the most important thing is that it really doesn't depend on you. It depends on your soul, your inner self, or in the, you know, in the Buddhist circles, they would call it the mind. Um, that desire, which is actually not a desire, but that want that uh, this inner consciousness of yours if it wants, it will manifest that experience, that state, 
permanently through you. If it is your ego desire, if you just find that uh, non-dual states are fascinating, interesting, and wow, they will solve all your problems, which they will, then, um, well, then you're basically stuck in spiritual materialism. And lots of books written about spiritual materialism. You don't have to listen to me. Um, I have a funny accent. I'm probably stupid. Um, but that's the deal. And that throws us back to that uh, scold that I have scolded people with many, many times. There is a difference between life coaching, which is how to make your life better. And Nirvana is the best place in the world. By the way, swastika is connected with Nirvana in that way. Swastika means suastika, great existence, amazing existence. That is actually a symbol of um, the, you know, the non-dual state, permanent state. And desire to be in that state because you're running away from something or you may be running away, not away, but towards something. So how can you achieve that state? Well, in my experience, what I've seen is that, uh, again, it has to come from really deep seated desire. Then you will know how to sit on your rear end and do long meditations. Do long meditations help in that? Not something I've observed. What helps is a certain deep-seated intention, which of course has to come from your soul. And the uh, inordinate amount of uh, suffering, suffering is helpful. And uh, what is going to be the subject of my third book, if I ever get around to writing it, um, you need to pass through two gates. In other words, you need to have two reference points. And the only way to achieve that is to become a member, faithful member of a cult. So if you become a devotee of Hare Krishna for many years, that will open you up to that possibility. If you become a faithful member of some other cult, then there is a possibility. Because you need to have two reference points to triangulate your consciousness into that true non-dual state. Without that, what happens is that it's all wishful thinking. And uh, the reason why becoming a devotee of some cult is important uh, is because it involves voluntarily giving position of power, voluntarily giving up your ego, voluntarily bending your knees and bending your neck and that horrible word surrender and uh, trusting the universe trusting that uh, the guru figure may uh, you know will not abuse you and you may still be abused or you might think that you're abused by the way this abuse thing is hilarious i mean there are so many people running around with lawyers uh, behind them or in front of them, suing this and that and that and this, um, because <laughs> they surrendered, they lost control, their ego got resurrected because of some stupid psychotherapy trip. And, uh, you know, just, there's lots of people who will deprogram you and tell you how bad these things are. And they'll return you back to the normal consciousness. And that normal consciousness has very low tolerance for surrender thing. Another thing which is really important that whole trip is that uh, you need to have a certain kind of intelligence. If you don't have it, then um, you will be an, an in encapsulation of what we call in Russian, there's a saying in Russian, send a fool to pray to God, he will bruise his forehead. So there's lots of people who think that they're qualified, but they don't trust enough to go to the right teacher who will tell them whether they're qualified or not. And you do need to be qualified to be on the spiritual path and get somewhere. 
Should you doubt your qualification? 100%. It's a very important issue. Should you get on the path whether you're qualified or not? Of course you should. Will you or someone like you fail? Yes. I'm not really talking to people who will fail. I'm talking to people who can be salvaged. And uh, am I the person to salvage them? God, no. Why would they want to do that? Hope I gave you a little bit of thought. Big hug. Have lots of fun. Grow a push, bushy tail. Make sure that bushy tail doesn't become part of some someone's winter coat. And uh, have a good one.